I'm going to show you how to get variations of a base color using some custom CSS that you can drop into any page builder. If you looked at this, the base color is black and purple. And then I've added in CSS code where it goes and creates all of these variations. I did not have a global color, then another color, then another color, then another color, and another color. Because if you are trying to create loads of variations, like when you have gray, you know, you have like charcoal gray, then you have like a dark gray, medium gray, then light gray, super light gray, barely visible gray, you know, and it goes on and on. But you could now just pick like a gray color and then add in some CSS and it will work all of these out for you. And if I scroll down, you're going to see how I've done it on some of these. So we've got full on red and full on blue over there. And then by adding in these class names, it whitens it. Now, this is not super perfect. And if you were to go and get a red color and move it along the color chart to get to like 50% towards white, it might not match exactly that color, but it is as good as it gets. And you just drop the code in and then you reuse the class name. This is the same class name applied. It will apply it to your base color. Let me show you the CSS. And there's the code. So if you want to use it in other page builders, go for it. You'll pick your base color. That's your background color. This then applies a whitening effect to your background image, which is actually on top of the color. Don't start going, but why is it not touching the background color? Because you've already picked it in your style tab probably. So that takes precedence. This is going to apply the whitening effect. And don't worry about DOM and rendering and all of that. Everything is fine. So let me show it to you in action. I'm going to go over to this box and I'm going to pick one of my global colors, FF0050. So you can see the color come in. For each of these, if we go to the advanced tab, all I've done is put light DG20. If I change this to be 10, it will match the color that's directly above. And the reason it does that is because it's only applying whitening to 10%. If I go and change this to be 50, it's now going to be applying 50% of whitening. And if I go and do 90, it's now applying 90% whitening. Now we don't have 100% because I only did colors going from 10% to 90% because I personally feel that if you're now going to go all on to like a really white, whitish color, you might as well just have white and don't have any color applied. But by adding in a simple class name, you can add variation to your color. And over here, I've got a full on black color apply to all of the containers and you can see what the class name is doing. But maybe you want the gray to be like pretty faint in a way. So you could start with a different gray, start with a mid gray, apply that. And then as you apply the class name, it's going to get whiter, whiter, whiter. Imagine if you started with something like uh, E6, 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 right? It would whiten down eventually. So that code is in the video description. Go and have a play with it. Love to see your comments. If you have got a better way of applying this, then please do let me know. But I think this is a pretty neat way to add variation colors because maybe you are going to have like a brand color uh, uh, from your client or what you're working with. And then you get to a point where you're going to have like black. You want to show black text, but the black text doesn't work very well. When you look at AAA or AA accessibility for contrast checking and all of that, in this scenario, you might want to go for a lighter color, but you're still within the realms of your brand color. So this could help you out or not. I don't know. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. See you soon. <laughs>